I thought I had a cunning plan, as someone once said, to solve the financial difficulties we face in setting a budget this evening. I was going to move an emergency motion that we changed the name of Kirklees to Surrey. But the Chief Exec says I can't. So that cunning plan failed. But thankfully he's going. So I can try the new Chief Exec and see if she can do better. Failing that, we have a budget before us that once again contains huge cuts in spending and subsequent cuts in services. For the last two years I have complained about the fact that Northern Labour-led councils were bearing the brunt of the failed policy of austerity that the current government still pursues, despite the fact it is clearly failing. And whilst it's true that Northern councils have been, are being untreated fairly, the austerity programme is now destroying local government everywhere, except, of course, Surrey. A good example of how far the destruction of local government has gone is the Isles of Scilly. They are looking to get up to £4 million loan to inject into their reserves as they fall below £500,000 and are facing 400 k overspend this year. Now, the Isles of Scilly is not a hotbed of left-wing politics, despite our own former Prime Minister Harold Wilson's best effort, who visited many times to try to show them the error of their ways. It's financial suicide to borrow to meet the deficit, and this can only end in tears. Liverpool's adult social care director said he had handed in his notice because he was tired of acting services for the elderly and vulnerable in his city. It's clear that local government is facing the biggest funding crisis in its history, and all over the country services are being cut or stopped altogether. <coughs> Nationally adult social care, as we all know, is in a desperate state, and a proper way of funding it needs to be found. Allowing councils to raise an extra 3% this year and next year is not the solution. It will face to fa fail to raise enough money to solve the problem, and it's an unfair way of collecting tax. 3% in Kirklees will raise much less than 3% in Surrey. We will gain 4.5 million, while Surrey benefits to the tune of 18.5 million. This equates to £10.30 per head of population for us, and £15.85 for Surrey. The problem of funding adult social care is a national problem, and needs a national, well thought out, cost up plan that works for all, not just wealthy councils down south. The average full-time wage in Surrey is £34,788 and Kirklees £25,688 and nationally £28,288. Surrey wage earners are 35% better off than our full-time wage earners. Surrey is clearly much wealthier than Kirklees and certainly does not have to have the social care and deprivation problems we have in Kirklees. But despite it being much wealthier than us, last year Surrey got a reported £24 million bung from the government. And this year, it's looking like 44 million. And what did we get last year? Nothing. And what we got this year? Nothing. Could the reason the very wealthy county Surrey gets all the extra funding be due to the fact that he has 11 Tory MPs, including the Chancellor, the usual chap to have on board when a bit short of cash, the Secretary of State for Health, and the Transport Minister? He has 58 Tory councillors out of a total of 81. Now, call me cynical, but I think there's a bit of a clue as to why they get preferential treatment. Even by the standard of this government, this bung to their mates is unbelievable, or is it? But however, however they try to dress you, the arrogance to believe that anyone is not going to see for what it is beggars believe. I might even have some respect for them if they admitted they were helping their mates. I would not agree with it, but treated as idiots, they are once again demonstrating their contempt for the general public and especially the residents of Kirklees. Mr Mayor, I, I move that Council accepts this budget.